what's going on guys jsgc here and we are here for the manchester city home win against brighton match analysis just wanted to say before we crack on with this video if you could help support my channel make sure that you push the big red button make sure that you subscribe put your push notifications on we're going to crack on with this video for the first bit of the analysis we're going to be talking about Manchester City's starting lineup now i really wanted phil foden to play in this game and i'm disappointed uh, that we ended up not playing him and uh, you know he ended up going with quite a strong side zinchenko going at left back low keeping his place from the league cup but with plenty of pace sarney and sterling a fresh sarney and sterling aguero up front too Decent. Murray ended up being on the bench for Brighton. They were missing some players like Pascal Gross, Dale Stevens, Esquerdo too. They were missing some important players there for them. So they went, ended up going with five in midfield, trying to compete with Manchester City's midfield. And for the first 25 minutes, I was expecting Brighton not to do a lot in this game. They ended up having a go. Decent chances, getting into some good crossing positions, working Manchester City's defence. Man City were doing the same to them. A pretty end-to-end -end for the first 25 minutes or so. Man City ended up then getting to grips with the game, ended up dominating the ball. And when Man City are able to do that, Man City are able to then kind of deal with the game. So 29 minutes in, Bernardo Silva, after Brighton decided to try and come forwards, Bernardo Silva ended up poking and intercepting the ball. He ended up working the ball through, passing it, finding Sergio Aguero, I think it were, who then feeds in Leroy Sane. When Leroy Sane then ends up going on a run, he ends up squaring it across. Ryan Sterling with a lot to do, ends up sliding in. And it's actually a decent goal for Manchester City there and a good goal for Ryan Sterling too, who ended up going 1-0 ahead. And from there, there weren't a lot really to talk about. It was a lot, bit, a bit huffed and puffed, if I'm going to be honest with Man City. It wasn't a classic performance, but still fairly decent. Half-time analysis, Brighton, for the majority of the half, very good. They were having a go. I wasn't expecting them to. They looked strong defensively, uh, but they were more than happy to let Man City dictate play. And when you're happy to let Man City dictate play, we're always going to be able to create chances. Ironically, though, the goal ends up coming when they decided to come forward. Uh, a frustrating game, all in all, uh, for the first half, but... When you go win 1-0 ahead, you're always going to take that. Zinchenko, I give an added shout-out here, was fantastic in stopping the counter-attack on the left, doing what kind of what Laporte likes to do, which is sliding and intercepting and stopping them counter-attacks. So well done to Zinchenko there, who ended up making his first Premier League start of the season. Now we're getting to the second half, pretty boring too. Brighton were struggling to really get involved in the second half and getting forward, and Man City ended up just completely dictating play. It's a matter of when rather than if. But 65 minutes in, nice team goal, passing it around. Sergio Aguero ends up twisting and turning round five or six plays. It was squaring it to Ryan Sterling, takes the one-two on with him. Aguero then ends up kind of not having an open net, but an easy finish for a striker of his caliber. Ends up just poking it into the goal, and he ended up scoring. Brilliant from Sergio Aguero. Not really mentioned his name. Didn't do a lot in the game. Ends up scoring a goal. Ryan Sterling gets himself an assist. Last action for Aguero as Jesus came on. Uh, then Riyad Mahrez ended up coming on for Lira Sane for the last 20 minutes. And then there weren't really a lot to report on. Phil Foden came on for the last three minutes for a three-minute cameo. A little bit disappointing, like I said, for Phil Foden not to get a start in this game. He was great against Oxford. And for these young players to get better and better, in my opinion, they need to be getting more minutes. They need to be starting games and making things happen. So it was very disappointing that he didn't. But a win's a win, so I'm not going to take anything from that. And uh, we're at least temporarily top. This has been recorded and edited whilst the Chelsea-Liverpool game is going on. So I don't actually know what's happened in that game at this moment whilst I'm uploading. But Liverpool need to win to go over Manchester City. Because if they don't, Man City are going to be over them going into the match at Anfield next weekend on Sunday. We've got a big Champions League match away in Germany against Hoffenheim first to look forward to. We'll have a preview up to that out. Um, probably on Monday. So we're just going to check the statistics for this game and I'm thoroughly expecting Manchester City to be dominating this one. So Man City ended up having 80% possession in this game. 80! They ended up having 19.9% .9 possession, Brighton did. City completely dominating the ball there. Man City ended up having 28 shots, 8 of them on target. A bit disappointing having only 8 of them on target from 28 shots. Brighton added had four with one on target so Edison had at least a little bit to do in terms of passes City ended up making 850 passes at a 92.7 pass completion rate decent Brighton made 210 passes at a 65 pass completion rate City ended up dominating the attacking third listen to this 381 of our passes were in the attacking third completed at a 90% pass completion rate whereas Brighton ended up having only 47 passes in our attack it in their attacking third or Man City's defensive third and only a pass completion rate of 36% that's where the game's been won and lost 
key passes for City. City ended up having 24 compared to their four. Absolutely incredible. City created two clear-cut chances, two goals. You're always going to take that. City ended up having more dribbles, making more things happen, having more corners, making more recoveries, same amount of tackles. City made more interceptions. Brighton ended up having more blocks. And this is where they're going to start dominating the stats now. More clearances, um, same amount of aerial duels. Man City ended up winning more aerial duels too, showing that they were stronger uh, at the back too when trying to challenge with the ball when they're clearing their lines. Uh, Brighton ended up having more headed clearances. Their keeper makes more saves too, more committed, more fouls. Ended up having three yellow cards compared with Man City's none. Completely dominated in the game. A 2-0 victory. I'm going to take that. Aguero goal, absolutely brilliant to summarise. Brighton did well up till Man City scoring. Then never really got going from there. They struggled with the game. It was nicer than to have a go though for the first 25 minutes or so. Because a lot of teams just sit back, don't even do anything for the whole 90 minutes. So it's nicer than to go and have a go. So they have the heads, heads held high there in my opinion. They got the scalp against Manchester United but they haven't got us this time. Um, I'd like to have seen Foden start, like I said, I'd like to have seen Fernandinho have a rest, so I'd have started Gundogan in this game, but Fernandinho, I'm not too sure, can go to Hoffenheim and Anfield, two very high intense pressing sides, and be able to do 90 minutes against both of them, that's why I'd have rested him there, so he had fresh legs for that, but they haven't, so maybe we're going to see some change of formation, or maybe see more of Gundogan, I really do not know. I thought the midfield was strong, defence was strong from City, uh, going forward, two quick wingers in Sane, Sterling did well in this game too. I found it very difficult to do a man of the match, but Ryan Sterling got himself a goal, he got himself an assist, so I can't look beyond that, and he got my man of the match fully deserved too, in my opinion. So there we go, that's been the analysis, we're, we've won three points, temporarily top of the league, we've got a big Champions League game to come, we've got the preview up on Monday, like I said, we've got some latest news up for you, and Man City content coming up tomorrow for you to look forward to, so make sure that you do subscribe, we're aiming for 2,000 subscribers before the year's out, it'd be ace to be able to hit that AS. AP. Also, just wanted to say, social media links there in the description below if you want to check me out on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find my email and if you want to hit me up with any sponsorships or business inquiries, then hit me up on my email. That's in the description too. You can go check out my second channel, Jason Sidlow Travel Man, where I do all my holiday stuff, travel vlogs, all that stuff. I'm going to leave that up at the end of the video for you to go and check out, like and subscribe over there. I'm also going to leave up my brother's partner channel, Mixed Do, Mixed Holiday Drinks. You can go check them out, like and subscribe over there. Go and check out my other videos too. Don't forget to share this video, help my channel grow, leave a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you all again tomorrow for daily football and Manchester City video. So it's been JSGC. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Saturday and weekend. Enjoy the three points, Blues. Peace. Ciao for now.